How many of you, now this is a real honesty check, uh, maybe I've already spoiled it. Is there anyone in the room that thinks the 80-20 rule is nothing more than a clever theory that they teach at business school, but in the real life, it's just not practical? Or you can also raise your hand if you think it's, it's sometimes true, but not always true. Anybody? Yeah, I didn't think you would raise your hand because I would, make, I would embarrass you. But uh, this is absolutely true. And people who ignore the 80-20 rule do so at their peril. Now, I'm going to use some real data to show you that, indeed, 20% of the business is gener- 80% of the business is generated by 20% of the accounts. Sometimes it's 90-10. Sometimes it's 85-15. Sometimes it's 70-30. But the principle is always true. It's true for every consumer product category, for every price tier. I don't care if you make wine in Algeria or Sonoma. It's the same. And why there isn't more rigor around this is beside me, because we have the data. IT people in the room, could you tell us what uh, 20% of the accounts in the U.S. are running 80% of the business? Yes, you absolutely could. So where's the plan? Why isn't there more uh, accountability for this? This is, fresh off the Nielsen's, the top 1,000 wine brands in unit sales. I've removed the names to protect the innocent. Uh, It's all you need to know is these are total unit sales by brand for the top 1,000 brands. If you can't tell that the business is concentrated in a small group of accounts, they're missing the point. But that's not enough. Let's, let's go deeper. Let's look at the growth. So what I did was I went into Nielsen's. I took all the companies who were growing. I took that level of growth, and I put it on this graph. Does it look familiar? What's ironic is it's even more concentrated. The growth is even more concentrated uh, into a fewer number of accounts. Uh, unit sales by manufacturer. Is anyone here from Nielsen? Thank you for calling this category manufacturer. We need it to be called manufacturer. Remember the guy with his nose in the glass? He would be so offended by that term, manufacturer. But this is a business. We manufacture wine, and Nielsen is kind enough to report performance by manufacturer. Uh, 80% of the business being done in the, top, in the Nielsen uh, universe is done by a large... You can tell who the one on the left is, right? And probably the, the second one down. But it's true for everything. Uh, here's wines in a can. Does the chart look familiar? Yes. How about uh, sake? A hot category? Same thing. It was really concentrated in sake. How about Armenian and Bulgarian wines? <laughs> it's true for everything. So let's get into some account stuff, okay? Because this is where it really gets interesting. Uh, this is from one of my consulting clients, so I will not name. This is for the state of Massachusetts. It looks at all retail accounts where they're doing business. Now, why is this, why is this graph? What's going on down here? Anybody? It's there. There's data there all the way up to 1,387 accounts. But why can't you see the data? Because I've only bought one case. Now, again, I don't want to offend any distributor people, but when you use the term account sold, That is a horrible term because it assumes all accounts are equal. I don't care about the account that bought one time and never bought again, especially uh, what what kind of gas they serve uh, at their pumps. It doesn't make any difference. (laughs) This is true. Let's let's look at just a couple more. Here's the top 500 distributor sales reps in the U.S. Do you see the same pattern? The other day I was coaching a a, a salesperson at one of my consulting clients, and she had it in her business plan that she wanted to get to know all the reps in the in her distributorship. I'm like, that's a huge mistake because five or six of them are doing all the business. You need to get to know those five or six and then find the one or two that should be in that group but aren't. And if they get a cold, you show up at their house with a box of Kleenex because these people are are delivering the number. Isn't the goal to deliver the number at the end of the year? You know, there's something unique about the wine business you may or may not have thought about. You don't find it in the spirits business. You don't find it in the beer business. You don't find it in any other consumer product category. If we want to adjust our production up or down, how easy is that to do? Very difficult. It'll take four or five years to make that adjustment. Meeting your volume goal is the number one business imperative, but you would never know it by following around the average salesperson who runs down here with the distributor because, you know, and let's be honest, do you know why these are down here? Why so, why so many people play down in this space? Because they're the furthest accounts from the office, and you can suck up a lot of drive time for your, for your sales rep. Anybody relate to that? Okay, well, take my word for it. It's true. So here's the punchline of this. This comes right out of my favorite book, The Complete Guide to Accelerating Salesforce Performance. 
I made the point that salespeople do not always act in the interest, best interest of the company. They tend, so the potential for accounts is always concentrated, always concentrated. The, in fact, it's segmented too, it's fractal. So the top 10% of the account base in terms of potential is, is almost a third bigger than the second uh, uh, 10%. What do you call that? There's a term for the 10th. One tenth. Anyway, you get the idea. So the top one third of the account base is a tremendous, almost half the business. But salespeople tend to spread their effort equally because they've not been taught or they're not directed that not all accounts are equal. Um, it, it reminds me of a, a, a sales meeting I attended for one of my clients, and we were sitting around the conference table, and they were uh, on the agenda was an item called their small state strategy. And I'm like, well, this will be interesting. And so they start talking about, you know, we need a strategy where we can get into all these small states. They're just, you know, they're just uh, ripe for the picking. And I listened to this after a while, and my eyes got big, and I couldn't stand it anymore. So I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You realize that 51% of all the wine business in the U.S. is done in nine states, and that the bottom 20 states do less than 8%. Any time spent talking about small states is a waste of time and a joke, and you could have heard a pin drop. But see, this is the application of business acumen and data and business intelligence. In the absence of it, people do all kind of stupid stuff, like have a small state strategy. What the hell is that? <laughs> so this is really, whoops. I'm going to really insult a few people in a minute. Uh, so this, this can be stopped. This can be stopped. The key to accelerating Salesforce performance is to identify the top 20 to 30% of the accounts that do all the volume and stop calling on the other accounts. It costs about $80 to $120 every time one of your salespeople gets out of the car. If they go and sell a case of wine, they should be shot on site for robbing from the company. <laughs> but this happens. It happens in your company, and you've got to stop it. And if you guys don't stop it, it's not going to get stopped. Salespeople aren't going to wake up and go, you know, I really need to start segmenting my accounts. This is going to stop calling on all this low-value stuff, all this trivia. It's never going to happen. But data technology and the best practice to go with it could just turn things around for you and your company. When we leave here, you should rush for the, well, they don't have pay phones here, but if there was a bank of pay phones, you should rush to the pay phone and talk to your sales manager and say, we got to talk because we don't need to have this mediocre performance. And if those of you who are thinking, hey, 10, 12, 16% growth is great, I got news for you. Why? It could be 30 or 40. It's not that big of a leap from 16% from to 30% when you start applying these principles. So. There's two ways to look at my box of crayon analogy. Uh, in, one is the trivia, right? Our salespeople are running around with 96 crayons in their car, uh, just swatting at anything that moves. There's no discipline. It's randomness. It's intuitiveness. And then there's this, you know, there's a saying that only a few things matter, but they matter a lot. And if you don't know what those things are, by market, by segment, by tier of your portfolio, you're going to get your head bashed in because people are, are figuring this out at a very rapid rate.